so I'm going live. <laughs> okay. Hello, Facebook friends. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, and thank you so much for being a part of our recount campaign for real democracy and for a vote we can trust. Uh, as we emerge from this uh, very contentious, divisive, and bitter election. Uh, it's really wonderful to see this outpouring of support from everyday people who are saying that we are not going to just um, sit here in the cynicism and the distrust that we saw really explode over the course of this election and actually before that as well, but we're going to stand up and we're going to make this work. Uh, there are many things we have to do. Um, we are taking it on the chin right now, whether it's uh, jobs and low wages, whether it's health care costs that are going through the roof, whether it's a generation locked in debt, whether it is black lives that uh, walk down the street uh, in fear uh, of violence, police violence or community violence, uh, whether it's immigrants who are uh, targeted for deportation and detention. You know, there's so much that we need to stand up on, and it's so inspiring to see so many people standing up, including the uh, surge for real democracy and for voting that we can trust. So we have launched this recount campaign on very short notice and with incredible enthusiasm uh, across the country in the course of about... Um, uh, 16 hours, we had blown through the initial fundraising goal, which was to be able to um, uh, have the recount campaign in the first state in Wisconsin. And over the course of about uh, five days, we've actually raised over $6 million in small donations, averaging $45, uh, coming from something like 140,000 donors. And this is all targeted specifically to this recount campaign so we can move forward in this historic opportunity that we have right now to actually call for a recount to ensure that we can be confident in the vote and to uh, move forward to a voting system where we don't have to raise millions of dollars in order to have a transparent and accountable vote. We should have automatic uh, auditing we should, that is counting the actual paper ballots, a certain portion of the paper ballots. That should be automatic to be cross-checking these machines in every case. And uh, we should be getting rid of the machines that have been proven to be unreliable, prone to machine error, prone to human error, and open to tampering. A lot of those machines are being used, including in Wisconsin. So these are the reasons, you know, why we are standing up and why we... Uh, are moving ahead in this very timely opportunity right now to file for a recount. And that has to be done because there are legal deadlines, so we have to do it now. I just want to acknowledge that there are many other things we need to do also to um, create confidence in our democracy and in our election system. And that means ending voter ID and the disenfranchisement of voters, especially voters of color and Latino voters. That means um, ensuring that voters are informed and empowered to make the choices that we want to make uh, through open debates and through media that uh, covers all candidates uh, who are on the ballot in enough states that they could actually win this election. Uh, it also means liberating our votes so that we can bring our values into the voting booth, not our fears. And that can be done through ranked choice voting that lets you rank your choices. So if your first choice loses, your vote goes to your second choice so that there is no fear about splitting the vote or spoiling the election. And uh, you don't have to uh, resign yourself to a lesser evil, this concept, uh, which is a little bit um, dubious to start with, but uh, it's out there, this feeling that you have to vote for against the person you're most afraid of rather than for what you believe. So these are some of the many changes that we are embarked upon. But right now, this is the time critical moment to 
ensure that we have a valid vote and to count the votes uh, and show that we can actually have confidence in the result in this very contentious and divisive elections where there were all kinds of personal attacks and uh, security breaches on uh, voting systems. Uh, this is the time to ensure that, that uh, this is a vote that we can believe in. Now, as you know, there's resistance out there. The mere fact that we have to raise millions of dollars in order to have a transparent vote is pretty incredible. It's not only to raise millions of dollars, but also the unbelievable legal and administrative hoops that I won't um, bore you with right now. Um, but it's not a user-friendly, citizen-friendly system. And we've just been hit with more evidence of how resistant this system is to actually uh, fixing it. So in the state of Wisconsin, we had been advised that we needed to raise $1.1 million in order to pay the filing fee in Wisconsin. Well, last night, we got the shocking news that the real cost for this filing fee is not $1.1 million, but it's $3.5 million, an utterly obscene and outrageous cost that we, the taxpayers, have to raise in order to verify the vote. What does that say about the voting system? You know, that says that uh, all the more urgently this system needs to be changed, it needs to be reformed, we need to ensure that it's working for us. And it means that we are not stopping uh, against a system that would like to silence us, that is throwing an absolutely obscene cost uh, on us for what should be every citizen's right, and that is our inherent right to vote and our right to trust the vote and to know that this is a vote we can have confidence in. So that's the bottom line now. We've had to come up with an additional $2.5 million dollars uh, that was paid to Wisconsin today uh, during business hours. So in the course of coming up with that additional $2.5 million for Wisconsin, we've had to draw down on the reserves which we need in order to proceed in all three states, also in Pennsylvania and in Michigan, where we've been moving uh, full speed ahead. In fact, in Michigan, uh, working with the election commission there, we've been assured that that vote recount of all the paper ballots by hand was to begin as soon as the end of this week. So we're about to hit the ground running now in all three states, but suddenly our resources have really been uh, strained beyond, uh, beyond uh, their capacity with this late notice that we've got to come up with this additional money for Wisconsin. So in order to do that, in order to proceed, uh, we're going to have to come up with an additional $2.4 million. So this is to let you know that uh, we have been really under attack by a system that uh, doesn't want us to count the vote that doesn't want we, the voters, to uh, have oversight, to have um, accountability and transparency in this system. So we're saying uh, we're not going to stop. We're not going to be intimidated. Uh, we are not going to be silenced. We're not going to stand by and give up on our election system at a time that we need to be um, taking back this promise of democracy and not surrendering to uh, these forces of economic and political uh, control by the 1% over the 99. So we're standing up, we're getting the word out, we're proceeding, and I urge you to share this, uh, to like this conversation, to get the word out, um, and to direct everyone you know who wants to have a democracy and a uh, voting system that we can believe in 
to go to jill2016.com slash recount and throw what you can into the pot so that uh, we can proceed and use this historic opportunity to uh, grapple with this resistant voting system and ensure that we, the voters, have oversight, we have transparency, we have accountability, and we create a voting system that uh, we can have confidence in and that we can trust. So with that, um, I want to say John Luevanos is saying that he will donate. Um, some people, Heather is saying, why not challenge other states? And what I'll say is that uh, these are the states that meet the criteria for being most likely to show a problem. That is razor thin margins, uh, a vulnerability in the voting system, like in Wisconsin using machines that are, um, have been taken off of uh, circulation in, uh, in California and are in the process of being removed from other states because they're extremely vulnerable, and also showing an unexpected uh, and unanticipated result. So that's why we're starting with these three, but if we have real findings here, then uh, we expect to be able to expand the, the, um, the inquiry. Um, Mimi Rue is saying, thanks so much for these efforts. It's ridiculous that this process is so expensive. Um, this is outrageous. Um, uh, let's see. Patricia Augustine saying, we are the media. Um, and others saying that uh, we should just move forward. I so appreciate your work. You can learn more about this, by the way, at jill2016.com slash recount FAQ, frequently asked questions, to know the real story here, because there are certainly uh, forces at play who would like to keep the 1% fully in charge, who would like to have the private uh, corporations that own this private electronic equipment, they would like to have them uh, un <clears throat> excuse me, unobserved, unaccountable, and untransparent. We're saying we need the opposite. We need the public voice and the public oversight to ensure that the system is, is serving the 99% not the 1% that has been firmly locked into power. So I so appreciate all of you who are standing up and who are driving this forward to create real democracy and a voting system we can trust. Thank you all so much for sharing this, um, this alert and for going to jill2016.com slash recount so we can take back this promise of democracy and an America and a world that works for all of us. Thank you all so much. Have a good night and see you again soon.